Hi guys, and welcome back to usetheblender.net. My name is Philip Homiser, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make this birdhouse in Blender. Uh, it's just basically a modeling tutorial, uh, modeling and texturing. So let's open up a new scene in Blender. We'll actually keep the de default cube this time. Um, just seems like a cliche thing to do to delete it, but <laughs> I'm just going to keep it. Um, first thing I want to do is go into scene um, and turn the units to imperial because as you probably know by now, I like to do things by scale. Uh, that will keep things from looking um, out of proportion. You know, sometimes it look out of proportional if you just keep eyeballing anything, which is kind of how I was taught, was just eyeball it. But I want to start doing things by scale because then the real world uh, will actually look right. So uh, I would imagine this would be about one foot by one foot by a quarter inch thick. So we'll go 0.25 inches which I think it just converts it to millimeters for some reason, but anyway, it works. So I'm gonna to try to do this as fast as I can, which is probably slow for some of you guys. Uh, so let's see here, rotate. Uh, I'm gonna turn on snapping to faces. So if you press, um, ooh, that's not gonna work. There we go, it's snap to face. If you hold Alt, oh, by the way, while I'm thinking about it, turn on my screencast key so you can see what I'm pressing. Um, also, I want the walls to be about eight inches high. Like I was saying, if you hold Alt um, and go down to the face, what I did here was I selected snap to elements and selected face. That way, if you hold um, Alt, it will snap it to whatever face you're selecting. So that's pretty cool, I just learned that recently. Okay, let's make the roof. Rotate 45 degrees with the graphic view. <clears throat> Whoops, 90 degrees. I'm just going to go in here and bring that down. Yeah, I mean, you probably won't notice, <laughs> but you know, in the real world, that's kind of how it would look. Just two boards stuck to each other like that. All right, let's create a plane. Uh, you know what? Before I get too far ahead of myself, let's go ahead and save this. Um, as you can see, I already started one as I already screwed it up, so hopefully we'll get through this one. I'm going to try to keep this one under an hour. <laughs> hopefully it won't be that long, but anyway. Let's see here. Rotate. Oops. And the Y axis. <clears throat> Oops, I still have snapping on. I'll turn that off. That tends to mess me up. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. I'm still learning Blender, <laughs> so I just to learn a few new things, and um, so I thought maybe you guys would want to learn them too. So go ahead and make some tutorials on whatever I learn. Help us all out. Oh, looks like I already snapped to the face. That's kind of cool. All right. Whoops. Oh, what am I doing? Alrighty. Let's bring it down here. Press E, extrude. Bring it to there. And scale that down to about there. Alrighty. Whoops, don't delete. All right, I'm going to bring this out a little bit. Let's bring it out, bring the roof out to about there. I don't want things to be absolutely 100% perfect. I'm actually going out of my way to leave a little, a couple little nudges there because in the real world, nothing is 
absolutely perfect. So actually, if it's off just a little bit, then it will look way more realistic, which is what we're trying to achieve in Blender, right? We don't want everything to be 100% perfect because it won't look right. All right, so starting to get a basic shape here. Uh, okay, this is kind of cool. This is something I just learned. Um, going to make a hole in this and whoops sphere I don't need that I want a cylinder rotate it 90 degrees in the y axis I'll get there eventually we're going to use uh, what is called actually I'm not 100% what how you pronounce it I call it bullion um, modifier. We're going to use the Boolean modifier. I'm going to have to look up the name after the tutorial. I should have thought of that before. <laughs> but I'm not that smart. I guess. Let's go ahead and smooth that. Okay, so we'll select the face here. Go into the modifiers. Go on to Boolean. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Uh, I'll go into difference. Click uh, cylinder go ahead and click apply and delete that cylinder and now we have a hole huh that's cool I'm doing things a little differently than I did at my other tutorial <laughs> so we're gonna have to fix that now all right what I'm gonna do is actually just delete all those faces there now I've got a hole which actually, go back, go back. Let me just <laughs> let me redo what I was thinking here. Let's select this entire. F actually, let's see here. Mm. Okay. It's got to be an easier way of doing this, but anyway, let's select all these faces in here. To delete this. Oh, wasting time, wasting time. <sighs> I actually thought of a really cool thing. It's probably possible in Blender. I'm just not sure. I thought of a tool called, I would call it the stagger tool, stagger select tool probably. And what this tool would do is you could select uh, like every other vertice or every other face rather than having to click every other one like, like that. So to all of you programmers out there, all of you Blender developers, there's an idea we could really we could really use. I would use it a lot. <clears throat> so, alrighty, I actually want this to come out a little bit, cover those faces. All right, let's make another cylinder. Probably should have kept the one I had. Rotate it on 90 degrees. Scale it down. I don't know how long the tutorial's been going so far, but hopefully not too long. My last tutorial I did at five in the morning. I'm doing this one at nine, almost ten o'clock at night. <clears throat> it's a good time for me, I guess. If it works for me, if it works for you, I guess it works for me. There we go. Smooth that. Alrighty. One other thing I want to do. Uh, let's just take, let's take this wall, duplicate it. And bring that over here. I'm going to turn this one into a door. And Little door for the birdies. <sighs> the birds won't be using this door. <clears throat> In my final version, uh, you can see I actually have it cut out. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. It's a birdhouse. They don't use doors that go through the hole, so we're not going to be cutting that out in here. It's just going to be for show. So we're going to go in here, we'll rotate it a little slightly, and just 
put it like right there. So this is going to be kind of attached like that. Okay, let's duplicate the roof here. Bring that down. Just over the door. <clears throat> And we'll just bring whoa, that didn't work. Faces, I mean select faces. Like I said, I'm still learning Blender. Still trying to learn all the little shortcuts and everything. Like I said again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's actually better if it's not. So slightly off like that. Oh yeah. Whoa, I messed something up there. All right, let's see, is that everything? I believe that is it on the modeling. Uh, let's see, I do need one more cylinder. Um, let's take this, go ahead and duplicate that again. Rotate it. And a Y axis. Scale it up. <clears throat> kind of center it over here. There we go. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Nice. All right. Now we can get to the texturing. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, we're not going to be using the internal Blender render. We're going to be using cycles. Glad I noticed that. That would have really messed up my world. Uh, let's go into the world settings. We'll go ahead and put some environmental lighting in here. Uh -oh. Grenade editor, environment. Texture, open, my textures, my HDR images, and I'll try to find, I can't remember which one I used here. I think, no. I'll uh, put a link as to where I found this. these HDR images that I use. Which one was it? Maybe it was that last one. This one? I really don't remember. Seems like there's a creek or something. Is that it? I don't know. I'm lost. Alright. Let's use this one. Looks looks like it. Let's go ahead and open the HDR image there. Go into rendering. And there we are. Yeah, this was the one I used. Alright. Let's go ahead and rotate that uh, by opening up the node editor. Uh, go into the world settings. There we go. Alright, let's we're going to texture coordinate node up and a mapping node. Is that right? Yeah. Whoops. Whew, what happened here? I don't want all that attached. What in the world? It's all a big mess now. <laughs> you, over there. There we go. Wow. I don't think I've ever had all this happen before. <clears throat> there we go. All right, now we can rotate this. Uh, we can rotate this. Come on, better be a fast way. There we go. That's cool. Yeah, that looks about right. I want the sun to be kind of behind it. Let's see. The sun is coming from this direction. We always want to kind of remember where the sunlight is coming from. If you're going to put another sun lamp in the picture, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's take this sun. Turn it into a sun lamp and we'll put it. Let's see which way is that? Okay, yeah. Put this about over here. This is about where the sun was in the HDR, HDR image. So we'll put that sun up there. Let's bring it way down here. <clears throat> Kinda of 
kind of line it up here, point it at the birdhouse. Now we can turn that back on. Yeah, and you can see in here, actually, click use node, and let's give it a uh, kind of a yellowish look because it's sunlight, so it just looks yellow. And let's, we can, actually, let's not really mess around with these values until I can put some textures in here. It's going to be hard to tell. So, let's get into texturing. Go in here, add a new. Let's go ahead and name it. That's called Roof Wood. <clears throat> and go to texture, open. Texture, wood. And again, uh, I think I got this texture from CG Textures. I will uh, put a link to that as well. Let's go ahead and go into texture mode. Okay, with this front panel, uh, let's put the camera dead on and go into edit mode, select all, and press U and pro project from view. And you can tell it projects it on there. Let's go ahead and go into uh, UV map editor. Let's go ahead and load in that rough texture. Where'd it go? There we go. All right, now we've got all this selected. Let's rotate it over here, scale it up. Not that much. Right there. And let's uh, stretch it out a little bit too. All right, there we go. So that looks pretty good. Now we're going to use the same. I'm just going to use the same texture. There, I downloaded like three of them, three different textures uh, of the same wood, just so it could give it some uh, uh, variation. But uh, I'm not going to do that here, just because I'm going to try to do it quickly. <clears throat> so we will uh, just use the same material for all of these. So. We'll just select all, and we're just going to do UV unwrap, which doesn't look like it worked very well. Oh, it's because I've got the wrong one selected. Actually, I'm going to go in there and just delete this material. Oh, boy, I didn't delete it. I don't know what I just did. Oh, well, we'll just forget about that. <laughs> all right, so we got that. Uh, just go around and do the same thing to all of them. Select it, UV unwrap. Again, I'm gonna have to put this other tutorial. I meant to name the other tutorial, uh, the, the other texture. Well, I'm getting tired. I'm blabbering and saying weird things. <clears throat> UV unwrap. Sign that. And you can rotate and everything. Like, uh, like I don't want the grain going up and down. So I'd actually take this and rotate it in this direction, scale that down, whoa, scale that down, and scale it across. That looks so much better. I thought I already did this one, I guess not. I'm losing my mind. <clears throat> and that one's already going that direction, cool. save it right now <laughs> golden rule always save like everything everything you do as soon as you make any kind of adjustments just just save it because you'll regret it blender is known for crashing and it's funny because it seems to go a long time without crashing and then you kind of forget and until one day it just crashes on you again Uh, probably want to project from view with this one because it's kind of weird angles and stuff. Ooh, oh, what am I doing? I didn't mean to do that. Project from view. Again, let's uh, rotate this. Scale it up. Scale it across. There we go. Um, 
go. Hmm. It's got a common one of my tutorial videos. <laughs> Alright. There, looking pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and do these. Takes forever. All right, these will actually want to scale this down a little bit, and this is where you can add a little bit of variation because I don't want that knot. That knot seems to be that knot right <laughs> seems to be showing up everywhere. So let's get that knot out of there. Right down here, a ways, and same thing with this one. Scale it down. Put this over here, over here, get that knot out of there. Whoa. Press the wrong button. So many things to remember in Blender. that knot again put this one up here there we go all right looking pretty good oh yeah I want to unwrap these this is a little different um, let's see how do I want to do this one I think I did smart UV unwrap with this and it's kind of yeah I did this weird thing here which worked I think I it seems like I had to make some adjustments yeah let's see what do I want to what I want to do here. Those are in the way there. <clears throat> See if I can pull these up. <clears throat> I know there's better ways of doing this, but I don't know. <laughs> All right, now this, uh, I want to scale this down probably like this, and let's see, actually, let's, yeah, let's scale it down like, oh, wait a second, actually, wanna, I'm going the wrong way, I want to scale this up, and then rotate it, I'm just trying to get coordinated here can't tell where everything's at yeah scale that down there that should look somewhat normal a little bit we have some articles here that we don't want to see so I can actually fix that by well, I can bring this down it's overlapping yeah there we go that looks good that should have automatically no I guess not I was hoping it would fix this one as well guess not all right we'll have to do this one then too smart UV and wrap this one might be easier and probably do this about the same what am I rambling on about <clears throat> oh, I bet you guys are ready for this tutorial to be done <laughs> hang in there you might learn something you might not who knows <laughs> oh. hopefully hopefully you'll learn something because that's what you're here for right I don't know why I'm going to such great lengths with this one because you won't, won't really be able to see it. It's going to be so small. I'm not too concerned about the ends. Alright, that's good enough. That is good enough. Now let's go ahead and set 
<clears throat> oh, wait a minute. I'm done. I'm not done yet. Not done. I want to take these ends and actually select the end there and go ahead and click UV unwrap again. Because these ends, they're not right. Still not right. Actually, I think I'm going the wrong way. This UV texture stuff can be really confusing if you don't know what you're doing. And in some cases, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> you just keep messing around with it until you figure it out. But hey, that's the best way you learn, I guess. Unless you have somebody showing you how to do it. Anyway, there you go, okay. Got it to where the grain's kind of going sideways there. Let's do the same thing to this one. Click the end. UV unwrap. Watch this one probably be backwards from the other one. Whoops. No, it's the same. Good. And we'll have to do the same thing to the these here. If you unwrap. <clears throat> and that is my son in the background. <laughs> he must have woke up. Keep on. There we go. Oh, goodness. Yeah. It's kind of a weird angle, but oh, let's go ahead and twist it a different direction. I know why. Pretty sure. Doing this in the wrong direction. <sighs> yeah, that's pretty good the way it was. Let's just go back. This tutorial's getting too long. <laughs> okay, leave it where it's at. Leave it where it's at. You guys can experiment with this in your own time. I need to stop wasting yours. <laughs> UV unwrap. Oh yeah, that one worked out pretty good. There we go. And door, I'm not even gonna worry about that. It actually looks kinda good. So that is everything there. I mean, we could do the backs and everything, but we're not gonna see it, so let's not even worry about it. <clears throat> now, uh, if you position the camera where you want it, press Control alt 0 it'll snap the camera where you want it to be, or also just found out if you click lock camera to view, you can, <laughs> can move it around just like that. To get it right where you want it, and then you can don't forget to unlock that because they all really screw up everything. <laughs> now you can go into render, see what that looks like. And uh, actually, let's get back out of here and let's go ahead and play with the lighting a little bit, maybe. Now that we have the texture set, render, let's bump this up a little bit. Just kind of match the lighting in the background. Uh, I don't want it to be too bright. That's pretty cool. I like that. All right. Yeah, let's leave it something like that. And texture's not done yet. I still have to add bump mats and everything. <clears throat> so let's see. There was something else I wanted to do. I can't remember what it was now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. While I'm thinking about it, 
let's go ahead and select the camera go to top view orthographics view and we'll uh, select limits um, go switch to f-stop and set this what I'm going to do is set some depth of field which is going to just add all kinds of just adds a lot more reels I'm going to love love depth of field so now you can see it's just a little bit fuzzy in the background if you adjust this bring it down the lower it is the more fuzzy it's going to be in the background blurry out of focus so I'm bring that down to like a four maybe actually let's see what three would look like now there's a problem with this um, f-stop usually doesn't work this great <laughs> um, with an object that far away it usually has to be like a micro shot for f-stop to work like this so some in some cases like three uh, with my camera if the settings are the same with my camera you can go down to like two or 1.2 and it's really really narrow depth of field so this may be possible I'm not, I'm not sure let's go ahead and leave it about like that and let's select the front face of that and go to the node editor and let's go ahead and switch to textures here now hopefully I can remember everything that I'm doing here <laughs> alright first things first let's copy the image texture here Ugh. and load in the normal map oh by the way I used um, crazy bump to create all of these uh, displacement map and normal map and uh, ambient occlusion specularity uh, so I definitely recommend going there and you just put any texture you want in there and it will create all these other textures so that is really awesome <clears throat> I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and put all these where you can download them in the link below so uh, you don't have to worry about that but yeah check out crazy bump that's awesome right now we're going to load in the normal map which is this bluish purplish looking image and we can add a go to vector normal map and plug that in to there and uh, where do I go from there that's right okay and plug normal into that normal and that will just add a little bit of bump into that um, also next we're going to do specularity uh, so let's add a uh, glossy shader and we'll add color mix node let's see is that right I think that's right yeah uh, go ahead and duplicate this and let's go ahead and load in the specularity map spec right there let's see I can't help but think this is supposed to be a mix shader or was that a mix shader? No. Yeah, okay. Mix shader. That looks right. It's probably right. That looks better. Okay. <laughs> that was confusing. All right, let's go into here. This is where I put the color mix node. All right. Put the uh, settings in there. Let's set this to black. I can't really explain how all this works, unfortunately. It just does. <clears throat> so set mix to multiply and let's go ahead and put the normal into here and there we go I'm going to set this to something like 900.9 that usually looks pretty good and this this kind of rough wood isn't going to have much specularity to it so you don't have to really worry about that we're going to go ahead and zoom in just a little bit so we can see more of the detail okay so let's, if I was to just bypass everything whoa <clears throat> my bad <laughs> I was uh, disconnect this bypass everything can I kind of see Whew. get out of here the difference here okay so this is what it is with just the diffuse texture nothing else and so if I put all this back in there 
can just see a huge difference. <clears throat> All right, uh, one more thing. Let's go ahead and add uh, the ambient occlusion map. So let's go ahead and copy another one of those. Now my computer's starting to freeze up. Uh oh, that's not good. <laughs> Usually means a crash is coming. Uh, let's go ahead and load another color mixer shader. Mix these together. Oh yeah. And let's go ahead and put the ambient occlusion in there. <coughs> And we'll, I believe, mix this. Yeah, and 50% usually looks pretty good there. I hope I did all that right. <laughs> yeah, the end result is looking pretty good anyway. Pretty sharp, yeah. So save that. All right, I think we're about done here. All right, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and render this uh, let's go ahead and leave it the way it is and go ahead and do a quick render and there it is uh, you know what yeah okay looks pretty cool so now with that rendered you can go back into the I meant for that to render up there but let's go ahead and go back into the node editor and let's go to uh, let's see in here okay yeah, what is that called? Node tree. <coughs> click use nodes and click uh, backdrop. And let's put output node, output viewer, so we can see what we're working on. Uh, what well, basically what I'm going to do? I'm just going to add a vignetting. Just a slight vignetting. It just adds. A lot more realism to it, so let's add a uh, lens distort node. Set that to one. Add a blur node. Plug that into there. Set that to whoops, fast Gaussian. Set to relative. Set to x axes, and let's go with about twenty percent. Twenty percent. Oh, you can zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. And let's set a, let's see, what was it? Um, I believe it was a math node. Is that right? No, that's not right. Color mix node. Color mix node. We'll plug the blur node into there. Let's plug it in right there. We'll plug this in here. You can see that vignetting effect working there now. Let's go ahead and plug that into here so you can see that. There we go. Let's go put that in there. Let's go ahead and click multiply so you can see the difference. All right. There we are. So now you can adjust the settings here. You can bring that down. I think I have it to about 0.5. It doesn't look like there's much of a difference there, but there is. Here, I'll go ahead and turn it off there. See? It's a difference. It's just a subtle difference. You don't want to go overboard because it just doesn't, it just looks weird. If you go, like, say that, it just looks weird. So 0.5, it's probably still going to be too high, but uh, I kind of like it there. So there we go. Let's do a one final render. Actually, let's go ahead and let's set this to 100. And what am I doing? Sampling. Put the samples up. I think I went to 500 on my final render. And let's go ahead and save it. Give it a render. All right, so here it is. Here's the final result. Um, hope you guys learned something from this. <laughs> hope you guys aren't sick of hearing me by now, <laughs> probably. So anyway, I'd love to see the results you guys come up with. So I uh, post those in the comments below. Any other uh, suggestions you might have for tutorials also put those in the comments and just let me know what you think so uh, that's it for me and I'll see you guys next time